Hi, Chad here with Purple Collar Life. You can see it's a beautiful sunny morning out today. The snow is really melting, but it's still only about 23 degrees. But we're getting ready for spring. So one of the things I need to do today is the spring maintenance on the 2009 Ford Expedition with the 5.4 liter engine. So I'm gonna go ahead and gather the supplies that I need. I have this nice shelving system where I keep all my oil for oil changes and filters. So the Expedition takes the FL820S Motorcraft oil filter. Grab that. I see I've got two quarts left here from the last oil change of full synthetic 5W20. This is the Amazon Basics. And this is the Supertech High Mileage Full Synthetic 5W20. Five plus two gives us the seven quarts we need for the Expedition. So we're going to do a couple things in this springtime maintenance video on the Ford Expedition. We're going to check all the filters, all the fluid levels, we'll check the battery, we'll change the oil. So some of the tools we need here for the oil change, we'll start out with the oil change. You need an oil drain pan large enough to hold seven quarts of oil. I like to have a creeper to slide underneath the Expedition. I've actually got the Expedition up on a couple of two by sixes, uh, three inches worth, so that the front end of the Expedition is a little bit higher. That helps the oil drain down to the back of the oil pan a little bit better. It also gives me more room on the creeper to roll underneath the front of the Expedition, which makes it easier to get to the drain plug. I also have seven quarts of 5W20 full synthetic oil. To get that oil drain plug removed, I've got a 5 8 wrench. I've got windshield washer fluid here because in the winter time and in the spring time, you go through a lot of washer fluid here in Northwest Pennsylvania. There's still some salt treatment on the road. Anytime the roads get wet, it makes the windshield hard to see through. And in freezing temperatures, I know some of you from the South may not know this, but you have to have special fluid for in your windshield washer reservoir. If you just put water in there, obviously it would freeze up in the days like today where it's only 23 degrees and then you'd have some real problems. So this is the type of washer fluid that does not freeze in cold temperatures. I have a light to make it easier for me to see in the engine bay and underneath when I'm removing that drain plug and watching the oil drain and removing the oil filter. I've got the oil filter replacement here. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing I wanna do is take the cap off of the oil fill. So I've removed that and you can see the cap does tell you what viscosity of oil this calls for 5W20, and that's what we're using. But removing that cap allows the oil to drain down a little bit faster. And I just set the cap here on top of the battery so I don't forget where it is. Now I'm gonna grab the wrench, we'll put the lid underneath, and we'll remove that drain plug. Now I like to toss a couple of blue rags down here on the ground with me. Those are just those blue shop paper towels. And uh, inevitably I do get some oil underneath there on my hands and on the wrench. That drain plug is all the way back here behind one of the cross members in front of a sway bar. So you're moving back from the front axle, cross member, there's the drain plug. There I've got the wrench on the nut. I've got my oil drain pan with the vent valve open. So let's go ahead and start draining this. There you can see the oil is draining into the pan. I did put the plug right there along with the wrench. So what I like to do while that oil is draining is take advantage of this time to check the other fluids. There's our brake fluid. We are well within the minimum maximum range. Our engine coolant antifreeze is also, there's a little indicator over here for the range. We're within range there. Let's go ahead and take this air filter box off, we'll take a look at the air filter. Getting to the air filter isn't the easiest. There are a couple clips to release, one there, one there, and one clear over here behind the air tube. You saw it flip down. Then we wanna go ahead and loosen this hose clamp, not remove it, but loosen it. That takes a 5 16 inch nut driver. And then last thing we want to do is pull the wire from this sensor. And that has underneath it 
a little clip to pull out and then push on a pin. Now that I pulled it out, you can see that. There's that red clip, so I pulled it backwards with my fingers, and that allowed me to push down on this black clip and pull that off. We'll just pull it to the side here. Now this fitting was so tight, I actually couldn't even get it removed to get that air box out. So I'm gonna go ahead and tighten that clamp back up. Because what I did instead was I loosened this back clamp, which allowed this whole unit to slide out. Sit back in there for a minute. Yeah, so that air filter is a little dirty. It's not horrible. I'm gonna rotate it around. This side's a little bit cleaner. Put it back in place. I'm gonna go ahead, I don't have one of these in stock right now, but I'm gonna go ahead and order one or get one and then come out and replace that in a month or so. So now we can put this back on. You can see these tabs need to slide in first, kind of at a downward angle. So once you've got that in place, then you can line up this hose back here. onto the intake manifold. Get that back in place and tighten this hose clamp. We will reconnect the sensor and push the clip back in to hold it in place. And then those same three clips to hold the air box in place. Then the last thing I want to do before I continue with my oil change is top off my windshield washer fluid. We should be good. You can see we're pretty much done dripping here, just a slow drip. So I'm going to go ahead and put that Drain plug back in. So I've got the drain plug back in. You don't have to go crazy tight on that. You want to be able to get it out relatively easily and you can actually strip the threads out there. So, you know, just, just tight, but not just snug, but not super tight. Now the next step, which is the messiest part is to get that oil filter off. It's in a hard to reach location, hard to twist. So I doubt I'll be able to record it. You can see where it is there. It's just kind of behind the cooling fan um, at the very front of the engine on the driver's side. So I'm going to reach up in there and try to loosen that up and it'll drain oil, you know, down along everything here and then hopefully fall into my oil drain pan, but it's going to come over part of the suspension there. So it gets everything pretty oily. I was able to get that filter off with no problem. I did myself a favor last time. I didn't over tighten it. I've had those so tight sometimes that they're almost impossible to get off. I've tried, you know, it's hard to get those oil wrenches up in there. It's such a tight squeeze. So I like to be able to twist them off by hand and I had no trouble this time. One of the things I like to do on the filter is just date it. So I remember uh, just in case I forget when I change the oil. So we are in three, 21 and I just write that on the side and on the very end of it and then you want to take a little bit of oil what I do is I just go ahead and pour a little bit onto the top of the filter and that'll start draining down into the filter but it also gives me a little bit that I can put on my finger and kind of coat this seal that'll help it seal up a little better and then the rest of it, I just kind of spread around in here, get those threads a little bit, make sure that seals good. Now, since there's not much for you to see underneath there, I'm gonna go ahead and put this on and then I'll pull the oil drain pan out and you can see what the old one looks like. You can see I've got the new filter in there. I just twist it until it gets snug and then go about a quarter turn more 
You can see I smeared that 321 date a little bit. So here's the old filter. You can see it was the same Motorcraft 820S. It did have writing on it. January 2020 is when I replaced this last. And I like this funnel that's got a little bit of a nice shape to it that allows me to put the usually quart bottle or a five quart bottle down into it. Now, if you'll recall, I looked up in the manual, this takes seven quarts. This Super Tech Walmart brand, um, I was hesitant about it at first. I used to only ever use the Mobile One brand, but I saw several tests online where they tested this oil and it did extremely well. So I'm happy with it. I've used it in this expedition uh, for probably the last 40,000 miles with no problems. Now you do have to pour somewhat slow. Since it is, since it is full synthetic, it does drain down in a little faster than if it were conventional, but it would be easy to overflow that funnel if you didn't pay attention. And I do have the dipstick pulled out on the other side of the engine to allow this oil to drain down into the engine and give it some breathing so that it's not so slow to drain in. You can see it's going fairly quickly. You know, the five quarts almost emptied into the funnel. Now that filter date tells me from January of 2020 to March of 2021 is a long oil change interval. Now I've been watching that oil life remaining in the expedition for a while. I usually try to change it somewhere between 10 and 20%. You can see I went a little long this time just because in the middle of winter time, I don't like to be out here in the garage working on that. Today it's about 23 degrees, so it's still chilly in the garage. A little bit warmer than being outside, but pretty cold. And in the dead of winter, it's just too cold to be doing this. If you recall, we have two quarts left in this Amazon Basics from the last time I changed oil. The Amazon Basics tests well also, so I've been happy with it. And again, it's another full synthetic 5W20. I read the labels on both of these and it is okay to mix the brands. I know some brands you cannot mix with other brands. So there we go, seven quarts. We will allow that to drain down in a little bit. Then I will check the dipstick. Then we'll start it up, let the oil pump into the filter, check the dipstick again. All right, so we let that oil drain down through for a little bit. Pull the dipstick out, give it a wipe. And we are within the full range. There are hash marks and drilled holes through the dipstick to allow you to see. We're at the top of that range, but I think what'll happen is when we start the engine up and it goes through the oil filter, we'll be right on, right on track. Now you can see the glove didn't hold up real well here in some of those tight, sharp situations. I'm pretty much done with the dirty work now, so I can go ahead and take those off. I like to start the engine up, let the oil pump through. I take a look underneath, just make sure I don't see any dripping or any obvious oil leaks from the filter or the drain plug. And I'm gonna check the dipstick one more time that we pump the oil through. I push it all the way down in, pull it back out. And you can see we are within the hash mark area right here. Right there's the drilled hole and the drilled hole. So you want to be between those two levels and we are perfect. So seven quarts is exactly the right amount, including the filter capacity. Thank you for joining me in this maintenance video today, spring maintenance on the Ford Expedition. We'll have several other videos like this coming up. We're gonna do spring maintenance on the Toro Time Cutter and the lawn mowers, spring maintenance on the John Deere. To get us ready for springtime here in Northwest Pennsylvania. But the last thing I wanna show you is how to reset that oil life meter in the expedition. I also keep track of when I do oil changes and maintenance 
on the Carfax Car Care app on my phone. And if you like videos like this, make sure you give us a thumbs up. We really appreciate it. It helps out the YouTube algorithm, helps our channel grow. You know, we're amazed. We just passed over 3,000 subscribers and thank you all so much for supporting the channel. It's, uh, it's a lot of fun and we're glad you guys enjoy it too. So I'm gonna go ahead and start the car up. You can see one of the things I look for is to make sure my oil pressure gauge and temperature gauge goes to the normal range. We'll go back to reset oil life, hold reset for new. There we go, oil life set to 100%. So now when we go through setup, info we have 100% oil life it also tells us our washer fluids okay charging systems okay so here we go Jennifer's expedition is all set for springtime I'm gonna go ahead and back it off these blocks now hope everybody has a great day once again thanks for watching we'll see you again the next time